U.S. forces attacking ISIS today, dropping the military's largest non-nuclear bomb on an Islamic State target in an Afghanistan cave. We'll take you inside the strike. Plus... I'm News 3's Ashley Lewis, live at the Columbus Riverwalk. Coming up, we'll show you how first responders are preparing for emergency rescues on the river. Tonight, in a live report. Okay, oh, we'll go live right now to Lake Harding. And let me tell you, I saw a gentleman down there in his boat getting ready for fun activities because the weather's looking mighty fine. We'll have that seven-day forecast for your Easter weekend coming up. The news starts now. On your side, this is News 3 First Edition. Good evening and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Teresa Whitaker. Tonight, for the first time in American history, the largest non-nuclear bomb has been dropped in the fight against terrorism. The Air Force dropped 11 tons of explosives on an ISIS tunnel system in Afghanistan. The strike was delivered in what's known as the mother of all bombs. Craig Boswell has details on tonight's top story from the White House. The Trump administration is confirming it has dropped the so-called mother of all bombs for the first time in combat. The GBU-43 is a large, powerful, and accurately delivered weapon. The 11-ton bomb was dropped on ISIS forces in Nangarhar province in the eastern region of Afghanistan near the Pakistani border. We targeted a system of tunnels and caves that ISIS fighters used uh, to move around freely, making it easier for them to target U.S. military advisors and Afghan forces in the area. Pentagon sources tell CBS News the bombing mission has been in the works for months, and General John Nicholson, the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, had to get permission to use the weapon. The United States took all precautions necessary to prevent civilian casualties and collateral damage as a result of the operation. This test video from 2003 shows the massive bomb being pushed out of the back of a cargo plane over Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. The bomb created a massive crater upon impact. The GBU-43 is officially called the Massive Ordnance Air Blast Bomb, but because of the MOAB abbreviation and its massive size, it picked up the nickname Mother of All Bombs. It is now the largest non-nuclear weapon ever used in combat. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. The military is currently assessing the damage in Afghanistan. Well, a well-known neo-Nazi infamous for giving the Hitler salute is preparing to speak at Auburn University next week. Richard Spencer's visit on Tuesday is sparking outrage on campus and in the community. While AU has called his actions deplorable, leaders say they can't prevent him from coming. And tonight's Auburn Update, News News Alex Durant shares with us the cause for controversy. Spencer is set to speak here at Foy Hall, and he says if it is like any other of his events, it is going to be wild. At the same time, there are some who would prefer Spencer not to speak here. No campus group is sponsoring the speech. Spencer paid $700 to rent the space inside Foy Hall. Freshman Walker Scott created a petition against Spencer. Scott says that he is in support of free speech, but feels that Spencer's ideas could do more harm than good. I also believe that his ideas have the potential to hurt people, to bring real harm to marginalized people. So I believe if his ideas are going to be spoken and protected under the doctrine of free speech, we don't need to be the people to give him, you know, an auditorium space and this allotted amount of time. We don't need to be the people to make it easy for him to voice these racist ideas. Coming up on the Evening Edition, I'll bring you the university's thoughts in regards to the event. That's coming up on the Evening Edition at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. On your side in Auburn, Alex Dorentz, RBL News 3. In addition to the $700 to rent the space, Spencer is also taking care of security costs, which will be provided by the Auburn Police Division. Well, Auburn students are reacting to Spencer's visit by demanding it be canceled by the university. A change.org petition says Auburn's decision to let Spencer spread his bigotry and hatred on campus is a mistake that needs to be corrected. This is video of him from December 2016's visit to the campus of Texas A&M. Spencer made waves last year by giving a hit salute and praising President Donald Trump during a speech. Spencer's topic is titled The Alt-Right and Donald Trump. He announced his appearance at Auburn in a video statement on Twitter. If this event is anything like my other ones, it is going to be wild. So I hope to see you there. The event set for Tuesday, April 11th at Auburn's James E. Foy Hall. 
from 7 to 9 p.m. It is free of charge. Well, new at 5 tonight, Columbus police are looking for two guys who broke into the My Boulange Bakery and Cafe in Uptown Columbus. You're looking at the surveillance video from Wednesday's break-in. We're told the burglars were inside the bakery for several hours, apparently just hanging out before they left with three large TVs and a bottle of champagne. If you recognize the suspects, call Columbus Detectives at the 706-225-4307. Uh, that number is right there on your screen. Once more, 706-225-4307. Well, making news in Georgia, Atlanta firefighters battled a large fire under a railroad bridge this morning. The blaze began around 7 near Cheshire Bridge Road and Buford Highway in Buckhead. No injuries were reported. The fire comes two weeks after a fire beneath an overpass led to a collapse of Interstate 85. Reconstruction of the I-85 bridge is expected to take until at least mid-June or could be sooner. Today, President Donald Trump met with the first responders who worked that bridge fire and collapse. We'll have more on his visit tonight at 6 on the evening edition. Well, as the weather heats up, thousands of folks from across the valley will be in Columbus to enjoy kayaking and whitewater activities. News 3's Ashley Lewis is on your side with why local agencies are coming together to conduct the Swift Water Rescue Drill. Ashley joins us live from the Riverwalk. Columbus Fire and EMS, WinSec, Columbus State University, and Whitewater Express executed a swift water rescue mission right here at the Riverwalk. The exercise allows first responders the opportunity to work together if a large group of people become stuck or stranded on the river. We spoke with the deputy director of the emergency management division for the Columbus Fire and EMS. He tells us why they're using drones to potentially save lives. To locate victims, both daytime, nighttime, it can be in the river, it can be in the woods, it can even be in an urban environment. But we're in the testing phase and learning phase now, recording the material, going back and looking at it, seeing what works best for us. The drill simulated victims that were stranded on the rocks and along the banks. Boats were sent to help rescue them. Also, the medevac Black Hawk helicopter responded to a larger party stranded on Cutbait Island. Coming up tonight at 6, would you know what to do if you were stranded in the river? We'll tell you what you need to know live on your side in Columbus. Ashley Lewis, WRBL News 3. All right, thank you, Ashley, for that live report. We will see you at 6. Now, this rescue drill comes at the very perfect time as thousands are expected to be on the river for the 2017 USA Freestyle Kayak National Championships this weekend, and you couldn't have scripted better weather conditions for this huge river event. Chief Meteorologist Bob Griswold joining us now with our first look at the forecast. Oh, you're not kidding. It's a Chamber of Commerce weather picture or photo if you were to snap this. Imagine sending this postcard to somebody they want to come down here and enjoy. Moments ago, down to the bottom right corner of your screen, a gentleman was in here prepping his boat, probably getting ready for this weekend. A nice breeze, beautiful lake weather, or beautiful river weather, beautiful mountain weather, you name it, it's all yours. 85 degrees out there now and dry. The whole region is basking in this warmth, except maybe uh, the exception of Panama City 76, but coastal areas might be just slightly cooler because of the water temperature. But farther inland changes a bit. We have 86, we actually hit 87 in Butler today. We were down about uh, a degree here in Fort Gaines, but we were at 88 earlier. And then so mid to lower to mid 80s is what we're seeing out there. Pretty consistent pattern across the whole southeast and where we see a little weak disturbance across Carolina is just a straight pop-up shower nothing organized really across the whole country except near Texas and Oklahoma where some of those are severe storms it should remain that way so the evening planner tonight get on out and enjoy Teresa this is a beautiful night all right, thanks so much, Bob. In our Alabama update, the Alabama Ethics Commission just announced Rebecca Mason, the woman accused of having an affair that toppled former Governor Robert Bentley, will not face any charges. Meanwhile, it's been a busy first week in office for Alabama Governor Kay Ivey as she continues assembling her cabinet. Today, Ivey appointed Steve Pelham as her chief of staff and Eileen Jones as her press secretary. Pelham is an Auburn native who has worked with Ivey for seven years, 
serving as her chief of staff when she was lieutenant governor. Jones is a veteran journalist who spent 18 years as a political reporter in Montgomery. More appointments are expected. Well, lawyers for the passenger forcefully removed from a United Express flight from Chicago to Louisville say a lawsuit is coming. They see their client as a poster child for a culture of disrespect that many customers are feeling. Wendy Gillette has the new details on the claims being made. Lawyers for the passenger in this video say the 69-year-old doctor who immigrated to the U.S. after the fall of Saigon never wants to get on a plane again. He said that being dragged down the aisle was more horrifying and harrowing than what he experienced in leaving Vietnam. Dr. David Dow's daughter says her family was shocked and sickened by what happened. What happened to my dad should have never happened to any human being, regardless of the circumstance. Chicago aviation attorney Tom Demetrio is preparing a lawsuit. He says his client suffered a concussion, broken nose, and lost two teeth when he was forcibly removed from United Express Flight 3411. If you're going to eject a passenger, under no circumstances can it be done with unreasonable force or violence. Attorneys say the family has not heard directly from United, but the airline released a statement after Thursday's news conference insisting CEO Oscar Munoz and the company called Dr. Dow to apologize. Munoz has publicly apologized and says United will no longer ask police to remove passengers being bumped from a full flight. Three Chicago aviation officers involved in this incident have been suspended, and the city council is grilling the Chicago Aviation Department and United about how this happened. Wendy Gillette for CBS News, New York. There will be a hearing Monday in Chicago about preserving evidence in this case. Dr. Dow's attorneys say United Airlines is ultimately responsible for what happened, but the city of Chicago may also bear some responsibility. Meanwhile, the airline industry is beginning to speak up against any effort to ban them from overselling flights. This comes as the feds and a Senate committee begin looking into the practice following the United incident. Airlines for America, a group representing most of the big U.S. carriers, says the practice lets airlines keep fares low while managing the rate of no-shows on any particular route. Federal rules all allow airlines to sell more tickets than they have seats, and airlines do it routinely because they assume some passengers won't show up. Well, scaling back on migraines in tonight's Health Watch, steps you can take to help prevent the excruciating headaches. And after the break, we all like to save money, right? Well, tonight we share with you the one tip experts say you need to know to save up to 80% on your online checkouts. And temperatures, uh, 87 in Eufaula right now to about 84 in LaGrange. It's quite warm. The weather almanac today, we made it to 85 officially. And looking at low of 57 this morning. No rain just yet in this forecast. We'll have it for you right after this. brings you your first alert forecast. All right, here we are looking at a live picture of Columbus State Tower Camp. And oh my, look at that. Teresa Whitaker's got a box of Ghirardelli chocolate. Hmm, hmm. I'm going to have to indulge in some of that after, after Lent. Wait, I got a couple more days here. Let's take a look at uh, the State Tower Cam here from Columbus State, 83 degrees. Winds are light from the east-southeast, and another view live. We take you to Columbus Public Library here. I don't even, I'm going to go back again and show you, tell you one more time without me hitting it. Isn't that beautiful? I want to show you. I forgot to put that on there. The clouds that are out there, just fair weather clouds. Beautiful afternoon, looking terrific. And temperatures out there to boot are all consistent. Americus is 81, about the same at Opelika. And in between, we do have some mid-80s out there even at this hour. So the next 24 hours, what can you expect out here? Of course, the clouds will just more or less dissipate. We could clear in the overnight, very similar through early tomorrow morning. We make this dip down to lower 60s. Some, some of you off are. We'll get in the upper 50s. And bam, back in the afternoon, pushing those mid-80s again. And the cloudcast model's not showing anything that's going to be of substance. What we do have 
It's a very weak uh, area of moisture kind of drifting in here. That's the airflow, if you will. And it's kind of lifting in from the southeast, northeast over the next couple of days through Saturday, which will bring a few more clouds here and there, but we're not going to talk about anything disruptive. We still remain in a very stable pattern. Come Sunday, though, we may see some of these erupt to just a stray shower on Easter Sunday, but nothing that's going to be a washout or disruptive. So just enjoy your plans. Fair weather clouds popping up here on a visible satellite. We branch it out a little bit and show you how this big ridge of high pressure is kind of circulating. And with it again, just picking up little humidity and moisture over a very warm surface. That's why we're seeing some of these clouds building. And across Texas and Oklahoma, that's where the stronger storms exist. And they're going to continue there. They're not going to change too much. So mostly clear and mild. That's really what we're waking up to in the morning, 58 degrees. For your Friday morning, 58, 77 with some hazy sunshine and 84 to 85 in the afternoon. So headed down, of course, towards uh, the river, looking fantastic for your Friday. So hour by hour forecast then. 84 degrees, we jump up to about 82 early afternoon and topping off to those mid 80s by 4 to 6 o'clock again. So that Friday forecast, no complaints here. Just mostly sunny in the afternoon. And we do get a fair weather cloud or two, and that's about it. And is that what we say is a weak disturbance comes in. A little front kind of drapes across Tennessee, North Alabama, and Georgia through Sunday through next week. And with that, just some weak disturbances. That's W-E-A-K, disturbances <laughs> coming through. And that's why I only add the word words, I should say, each day here, stray showers here and there, mid-80s, upper 80s, nothing really changes. There's no significant cold fronts coming in. So we get down to Bay Avenue starting tomorrow. We'll be live down there with our friends at Uptown Columbus, always Uptown. It's going to be a good weekend, and that kayak festival is going to be fun. Paddle South Festival are looking for volunteers, I'm told. So great weather for it. If you'd like to volunteer for the event, check it out at Uptown Columbus's website. And All right, Bob. Can't to have you. wait for this weekend. Oh, you know it. All right, thanks. Okay. And tonight's Consumer Watch report. Forget about brand new. Your family can save lots of money shopping for gently used clothing online. Buying and selling used clothing is one of the hottest online trends. Secondhand apparel is estimated to be an $18 billion industry. One consignment site called ThreadUp is selling more than 30,000 items of clothing every day. Based in California, the company receives bags of used clothing sent in from people across the country. If it's clean and in nearly new condition, it's posted online at the bargain price prices. The is 80% off of, of what somebody would pay in a retail store. eBay is definitely the granddaddy of these online consignment shops. I think it made it fashionable and cool to sell your things online, and it also made it very cool and fashionable to buy things that other people had owned before. Jones says the internet has grown into a bargain hunter's paradise. So if your family is looking to save money, shop the sales online. And if you've ever had a migraine, you'll do just about anything to prevent the excruciating pain. After the break and Health Watch, a tip on how to scale down your chances of getting a debilitating headache. In our Health Watch report, magnesium supplements could be the key to preventing bone fractures, one of the leading causes of disability among older adults. Researchers in the UK studied thousands of men over a 20-year period. They found those with low, lower blood levels of magnesium had a greater risk of fractures, especially of the hip. And stroke patients who are left partially blind may be able to retrain their brains to see again. The University of Rochester has developed training software to help repair damage to the part of the brain that processes visual input. Study authors say it's the first evidence to show that blindness can be reversed even months after a stroke. And being overweight or underweight may increase the risk for migraines. Researchers at Johns Hopkins analyzed the results of a dozen different different studies, obese people were 27% more likely to suffer migraines than people of normal weight. Underweight patients were 13% more likely. We're going to have a final look at the forecast when we come back, but first, here's a look at what's coming up later tonight on WRBF. Tax day. 
Excuse me. Tax day is quickly approaching with less than a week to get your return filed. If that idea stresses you out, imagine how accountants are feeling. Well, Texas accounting firm Henry & Peters is decompressing while crunching numbers thanks to McMur Mc uh, Murray, Henry & Concho. Therapy dogs. Research shows being around a dog and petting them can help humans relax. Breathing slows down, heart rates and blood pressure lower. The dogs and their owners volunteer with Therapet and visit hospitals, schools, and prisons. This visit is a way for the nonprofit to say thanks to the accounting firm for being one of its main donors. I can say that wow. dogs really make you feel all of that. How about that? Isn't that nice? Very nice to see that, I'm telling you. Very good. Well, our weather is looking good, and having those therapy dogs out in the weather like today feel, feels fantastic. Right through Easter, mid-80s and lower 60s. Looks very nice. And it's going to be great for the whitewater rafting experience this whole weekend, all the festival stuff and much more. So get out and enjoy. Uh, today was a great day at Columbus State University. I had a lot of fun out there. This is Tower Day at Columbus State University where they get to flaunt all the their good works the students i'm talking about from anywhere from science medical humanities fine arts and more i actually had the privilege to work with dr kamal and uh, professor israel with the department of art i was able to even work with the math students by introducing them the basic elements of weather you know temperature humidity atmospheric pressure wind and much more mm -hmm. and they demonstrated these great forecasts which we'll see more at six five central wonderful to right, see the works bob yeah. thanks so much and thank you so much for watching we'll see you back here at the top of the hour